Halo Wars? That's a novel one, isn't it? Now, I know, I know, there are a lot of games you guys have been asking me to review. Company of Heroes 2, Homeworld, Grey Goo, but fear not, we will get to them. Eventually. Maybe I should make a giant Excel spreadsheet like Mandalore. Hmm, always an idea, I suppose. The decision to do this review was made in the spur of the moment. I had planned to get right into my review of Red Alert 3 after taking a few days off following my video on Warhammer 2. Speaking of, if you want to know the second that video goes live, hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. But last month I began to play through Halo Reach via the Master Chief Collection, so I've been caught up in the Halo universe ever since hitting the export button on that last video. And being a PC guy, I'd never played any Halo games since the first. There was no way I was going to install Windows Vista just to play Halo 2. But despite that, Halo Wars has always intrigued me. It's an RTS made by acclaimed strategy developer Ensemble Studios, built from the ground up to be played on the Xbox 360. While not something I personally would be asking for, the pedigree of Ensemble is more than enough to give it the benefit of the doubt. Halo Wars was announced at X06 in, you guessed it, 2006, and saw its initial release three years later for the Xbox 360. Critical response at the time was strong, but not spectacular, and the definitive edition released seven years later for PC and Xbox One followed suit. Feedback from players, however, was more of a mixed bag, and responses were likely anchored by said fans' history with real-time strategy. For RTS veterans out there, Halo Wars is often characterized as a shallow experience that's restrained by the shackles that the platform is released on. By others, however, it's described to be much more accessible than its counterparts, and a welcoming first step into an often intimidating genre for those who are not familiar with it. And that it's just a darn good game too. But I like to make my own judgments around here, and I'm going to try and leave my biases at the door for this one. So let's crack into it and see if a console first RTS can really rival the classics we all know and love. Making a new game in a decade long running series is hard. Making one that's in a completely new genre is even harder. So I don't envy the position Ensemble were in when they were tasked with translating a beloved FPS series into an RTS game. Not to mention the already difficult job they had of making that game feel at home on a console, a feat that few strategy games have ever pulled off. But we'll get to that later. Right now we ask the question, does Halo Wars feel like a proper Halo game? I'll start with the music, as that's arguably one of the series' most recognisable elements. As soon as you start, you're hit with that main theme, and to be honest, it caught me off guard. Yeah, take a listen for yourself. It's pretty good, right? It's true to the series, while also being unique enough to set itself apart. Speaking of being unique, the story follows the UNSC Spirit of Fire and its crew as they fight against the familiar Covenant while also bumping into the Flood along the way. The story is serviceable, it's set before the first Halo game so there's no messing with the established lore of the franchise, and the story is canon which gives Halo Wars a good sense of authenticity. But it doesn't come close to other games in the series and the narrative follows quite a simple path that doesn't take too many twists or turns over its fairly short 10 hour or so runtime. Less impressive than the story though are the characters, who feel like cardboard cutouts you've seen countless times before. You've got your gruff no-nonsense captain, the gung-ho sergeant who just wants to blow shit up, and the brilliant scientist who's overly rude for no reason. And the voice acting leaves a bit to be desired too. What do you think they're looking for? That's what we're here to find out. We're to bring Alpha Base up to operational status and take control of that site. I'll get my equipment ready, Captain. Lady, there's no way you're coming down here on the first burn. To Halo Wars credit though, the cinematics are very well done and look fantastic for a game that came out in 2009. And while the pre-rendered cutscenes are a high point, the in-engine ones leave a bit to be desired. And I know, I understand that it's difficult for an RTS to pull off in-engine cutscenes well. Assets are normally less detailed than in first or third person games, as most of the time RTSs are built around viewing them from high up bird's eye perspectives. 
Zooming the camera right up close to them to try and tell your story is something most developers probably want to avoid. But there are ways to do it well. Massive Entertainment proved that two years prior to Halo Wars with the world in conflict, which has been lauded by fans and critics alike for its storytelling. And while these are obviously lacking details, the animations go a long way in making you see past its shortcomings. And I think Halo Wars story would have benefited tremendously if it had done something similar. Otherwise, I do think the game is very pleasing to look at when you're actually playing it. Graphically, it holds up well and looks just as good as other RTSs released around that same time period. Units have a lot of character and detailing that does help their believability of being something tangible, such as the elites here using their energy swords and the Spartans holding that recognizable pose while they're equipped with heavy weapons. It's authentic to the source material too, and the attention to detail Ensemble put into making this really does give the sense that this is a proper Halo game. You'll notice weapons have those same iconic sounds you've been hearing since combat evolved, and the Warthog drives around with the level of reckless abandon that you've come to expect. And the visuals for things like Banshee plasma shots and mounted machine gun fire are perfectly implemented, and look like they've been ripped straight from the mainline series. To put it simply, the game looks good and it's at its best when the guns are blazing and buildings are crumbling. Hell, it's more than good. It's downright impressive. Something else that really stood out to me, oddly enough, are the building animations. Maybe growing up with Command & Conquer has given me an inflated appreciation for a good construction animation, but regardless, Halo Wars structures have some real life to them. Although this really only applies to the UNSC, as the Covenant buildings mainly just phase into existence, or whatever this is. But for the former, you can tell some dedicated developers put some real hours into making these a reality. I'm sure it seems like an odd thing to get excited about to a lot of you, but for those who feel the same way, you know who you are. But while the animations are impressive, the finished buildings themselves are found to be lackluster at best and gameplay hindering at worst. I had real trouble telling them apart when I was playing, and often found myself just clicking on random ones until I landed my cursor on the one I wanted. For the UNSC, it's more apparent for the construction buildings, as the supply and research ones are fairly unique, but for the Covenant, it's way worse. Their dominant purple colour scheme and no straight line design philosophy makes it exceedingly difficult to get used to what each one looks like. RTSs need to have visually distinct buildings to allow the player to play efficiently, and Halo Wars definitely fails in this regard. An effective comparison is something like Age of Empires, of course also made by Ensemble and released over a decade earlier. Storage pit, granary, barracks, town centre, stables, etc. No dramas. As you have probably guessed by now, Halo Wars is unlike most RTSs that you've ever played. The game is a unique experience that to me feels a lot like an action game, and less like a strategy one. Because of the game's requirement to be easily played on a controller, the UI and game mechanics have been simplified to quite a degree, likely a positive for people new to the genre, but with the possible downside of leaving veterans like you and I dissatisfied. Population caps are small, combat's fast, and unit building and research variety is unfortunately quite limited. Every action besides moving and attacking is done through this big radial menu, reminiscent of some console third person shooters. It's simple and intuitive to use on a controller, but quite in your face when navigating with a mouse and keyboard, as it covers the entire screen. And the requirement to have everything accessible through a controller has dictated the game's strategic depth, or lack thereof in this case. I'll get to the specifics later on, but don't expect to see any elaborate tech trees or unit upgrade paths. And admittedly not everything about the controls is a negative. Some of the additions made to simplify things are surprisingly refreshing, and to be honest I wouldn't mind seeing them implemented in other action focused RTS games. Being able to select all your units with the press of a button is unexpectedly welcome, and the ability to set a global rally point for all new units is something I'll sorely miss going forward into other games. But enough on the controls, let's get into the gameplay itself. As for modes available, there's of course the single player campaign when you play as the UNSC, but regrettably there's no such campaign for the Covenant. But a welcome surprise is the ability to play the entire thing cooperatively, quite the unexpected inclusion. You can also play skirmish against the AI, or of course against or alongside other human players online. Unfortunately, there's no crossplay though, so forget about playing co-op with your buddy on their Xbox, or for that matter even on another PC platform. 
The game is in fact available on both Steam and the Windows Store, but for some reason they can't speak with each other. That one person on the Windows Store is going to be really upset about that. This here is your home base, and while there is obviously base building, it's not freeform like most strategy games. Instead, there's an allotment of dedicated spaces attached to your base, and it's up to you to decide how you want to use each one. The number of spaces available can be upgraded through research, but only to a degree, so in the end you're still limited to 10 or so. It's not really a problem though because you can deploy other bases across a map in specific locations, and there's only a few different building types to choose from anyway. In the end you'll be building more buildings to accelerate resource production or just build the same troops at a higher rate. Like I said, the building selection is limited. There's one for gathering the game's only resource, one for increasing your tech level, a single one for research, and then a few for unit production. It's unfortunate because the selection is effectively the same across both factions, making each feel more similar than I'd like, considering they're the only two playable factions in the whole game. Everything feels very samey, and it doesn't lead to any sense of diversity that you'd expect to see between the Covenant or UNSC. Even Company of Heroes found a way to make factions feel diverse, and that's for a mostly historically accurate World War II game. It's disappointing to see two factions of entirely different species operate in such a similar manner. Granted, they have unique stats, upgrades, and some special abilities, but there's just not many of them to begin with, and not nearly enough to where the sheer number of unit types could make up for it. The only real place to find some actual diversity is in your leader selection for skirmish and multiplayer. Both factions get three leaders per side, and each has a special ability for the leader themselves, a unique unit they can deploy in battle, as well as a special unit upgrade, and in the case of the UNSC, a bonus passive ability. No word to why the Covenant leaders receive only the first two, and not the latter. And to Halo Wars credit, all these specials are indeed impactful, often offering significantly different ways to approach a battle. The UNSC Elephant is probably my favourite out of all of them. It's a tracked vehicle that functions as a mobile base and barracks when deployed, which leads to my slower playstyle as it's an invaluable asset if I'm trying to lock down a choke point or area on the map. Though in saying that, the UNSC Hawk for Professor Anders is undeniably awesome, and it delivers some serious firepower over the base model Hornet. While there are some really exciting units across both factions, overall I find the variety in the actual number of them to be lacking. It's less than most RTSs you're probably used to, and having only two factions limits its scope. It feels like the original release of Company of Heroes, where there were only two factions, the Americans and the Germans. Luckily for that game, it was able to expand its roster by adding new factions within those countries, as well as entirely fresh ones like the British. Not such with Halo Wars. What you see is what you get. Luckily though, the units that are here actually vary quite a lot, and you won't find many that fill similar roles or overlap in terms of their abilities, like you would in, say, Age of Empires. Each are unique and fill out a specific niche, which also means you'll do a lot better if you vary your army makeup, obviously as it should be for any RTS with its salt. Out of what's available in Halo Wars, I think I had the most fun in the campaign, despite having some issues with the mission design. A third of the way through, there's a significant difficulty spike, to the point where I ended up safe scumming one of the missions because of its seemingly random difficulty at the end. There were also some examples of having progress gated by waiting out a clock, and some where there wasn't a timer on screen per se, but it certainly felt like there could have been. In saying that though, having the story to accompany you through does make it more enjoyable, even if the story in itself doesn't blow the doors off. And the overall mission variety was enough to keep me at least intrigued to see what was coming up next. Skirmish, on the other hand, is quite disappointing. The lack of variety available in the factions, leaders, units, and buildings made each game feel more like the last than it should have, and after a few games, it seemed like I'd seen everything that the mode had to offer. Crushing your opponent, or being crushed by your opponent, with a big army of the same units and strategies is only fun so many times. Admittedly, some of the unique modes were fun for a round or two, but in the end, you're still playing in the same toy box, just with some altered rules. I see how it could be exciting for those looking to really streamline their gameplay to as an efficient level as possible, especially against other real life players, but you guys know that's not really my scene. Being 11 years old, it'd be a fair assumption that Halo Wars isn't as easy to jump into a game as it was back in 2009, but it does have a trick up its sleeve. 
and that's obviously its definitive edition, released on Steam, the Windows Store, and Xbox One in 2016. With the entire DLC package, enhanced graphics, as well as obviously the fresh port to modern systems, the definitive edition was a great way for players to give it a shot, who either hadn't been able or willing to give it a try earlier because of its initial launch restriction to the Xbox 360. Because of this the game is super easy to buy, and online multiplayer, both PvP and co-op, is fully intact. I do think the price is pretty fair too at 20 USD, maybe it's a little on the steep side, but if you're not sure it's worth it you could always consider getting it on sale. Personally I've seen it for as much as 60% off. The only real downside with the Definitive Edition is the lack of crossplay support, as I mentioned earlier. While it's not a huge shock to not see it between the PC and Xbox versions, the fact you can't play between the Steam and Windows Store is disappointing. Now, I know, I doubt the player base for the Windows Store is very large, but it's the principle, you know? People shouldn't be hamstrung by the platform they bought their game on. Again, it likely doesn't affect many players at all, but that doesn't mean I'm going to give it a pass. I'm sure there's at least one person out there who bought it on the Windows Store, only to discover they couldn't play it with their friend who bought it on Steam. And if that was me, I'd be pretty unhappy about it. Halo Wars is a bit of a black sheep in the realm of RTS games. It's a title that's trying to be many things. A strategy game that feels at home on a console, while still being just as accessible on PC, and a good Halo game in a genre that the series had never ventured into previously. I'm sure you can understand how tough of an ask that was for the development team at Ensemble. And all things considered, I think they did a good job in trying to please all of those audiences. First and foremost, Halo Wars succeeds at being extremely playable on a console. I remember the last console RTS I played was a port for Age of Empires 2 on the PlayStation 2, and yeah, that's best left forgotten in the past. Next, it had to be a true Halo game. This was the first title in the series not to be developed by Bungie, and there were doubts that another studio would be able to capture the same feel and atmosphere that its creators could. And despite me not being a series super fan or anything like that, the visuals and audio do capture those vibes that I'm familiar with. Furthermore, while the story is nothing incredible, it does indeed feel grounded in the Halo universe, and not like a back alley RTS that has a Halo skin slapped onto it. Lastly, Halo Wars aims to be a competent PC RTS that hopes to stand with the best of what our platform has to offer. But unfortunately, I can't say it completely achieves that. Game mechanics are shallow, the control scheme is overly simple, and there's just not much in the way of content to keep players invested, especially when compared to other titles in the genre. So all that information should lead you to your own conclusions on Halo Wars. If you like the series and want to try it as a strategy game, or you want to play a game in the genre that is completely made with a console in mind, you'll likely have a good time, at least for a while. But if you're like me and have grown up with games like Command & Conquer, Age of Empires and Company of Heroes, then I'd say you'll find Halo Wars lacking in more than a few areas, and ultimately not feel the need to go back and play it in 2020. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to follow me for updates on the channel and future videos, then head over to my Twitter and give me a follow. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I truly appreciate it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.